if you are wondering what it takes to produce a video online, we're hoping this will help you create that using the simplest of tools and maybe some of the things that you already have, like a smartphone. First question I would pose back to us is, um, what exactly do you want to stream? Because live streaming can incorporate a bunch of different things. It may not even be live. Do you want to produce um, a video of the sermon? Are you wanting to have a whole package of a, a worship package that includes a sermon and prayers and, and um, some music? Or um, are you trying to do something else altogether? Um, uh, one of those altogethers might be, are you just trying to get people together uh, for a, a chat or some kind of interactive thing? So there's a lot of platforms, and um, you know, but the major platforms are going to be Facebook, um, YouTube, uh, Vimeo. Two things you want to really consider as you're choosing your platform. One, uh, what are you comfortable with? Uh, you know, especially if this is the first time you, you're you're expanding into this area, you want to use tools that you're familiar with. Um, the second thing is, what are the people that you're trying to uh, reach? Where are they? So. If you were to ask me this question and um, the church was a, a church filled with 20-somethings, my answer would be different than if it was the average church maybe filled with folks who are closer to retirement in age. For that second category, you might, you might lean in the direction of Facebook, but there are some congregations that don't really appreciate there are members who have issues with Facebook for one reason or another. So YouTube might be a more uh, neutral solution in that case. Uh, one of the big benefits for Facebook is you get some flexibility in how you put that content online. Um, you can you could do it live if you just wanted to pull out your s smartphone and, and go ahead, but you could also um, pre-record it, schedule it for a period of time, let your members know when it's going to be available, and it will just show up. If you are going to go live, you really want to have a strong internet connection. You want to have good upload speeds. You want to test the, the scenario that you would be using. What is the number I should be looking for for my bandwidth before I can say, oh, I can do this? Well, you probably want something at least 3 Mbps, um, uh, megabits per second upload speed. Uh, you know, if you, you have something like double that, you're, you're in a better situation. The, the, the reality is that those numbers fluctuate all the time based on uh, what, what else is happening on the network you're on, what your neighbor may be doing. Um, so, so those are the things you want to consider. If you're just sharing a sermon and you have not included in that sermon any poetry that was written by someone else or extended uh, paragraphs of prose from uh, someone who's still alive. Generally speaking, uh, your vocal work is probably gonna be okay, but anything you sing or play on a musical instrument, musical pieces, those are gonna be more of an issue. You have to make sure your licenses are clear. Now, if it's a work of Charles Wesley, you're, you're okay. Um, I believe 1924 is the current year where you know, anything before that is a, it's gonna be an open to me. So I can't just go to the piano and start playing music, especially if I don't have the license to play it. That is correct. Um, religious communities kind of struggle with this one because it's, uh, we, we have this religious exemption that covers religious music uh, being used during a, a worship service. Mm -hmm. But once you move past that, the, the walls of that worship service, so to speak, uh, that exemption goes away. Mm -hmm. So if you take, um, for example, a religious service that you know, would fall within that and you record it and you stream it out into the world, uh, it is no longer covered. Even though um, a, lot of, a lot of this uh, are songs that are in our hymnal, um, most of those you can't actually use. You can't? You can use them in church, but once they go beyond the walls of the church, unless they were written before 1924, uh, you need licensing to stream those. The good news is that there are streaming options for churches to pursue. There's one license from CCLI, which is a, an addition to the base license, which offers a streaming option. There's another one from Christian Broadcasting Solutions. 
and uh, they both work differently and they cover different things, so it's worth looking into which one is the best fit. What about CVLI? CVLI allows you to play some videos in your worship service, but it does not permit you to stream those videos. So you mean even my sermon, if I was able to play something like Rob Bell's video in my sermon, I can't do that online too? That is correct, unless you have, uh, unless you've secured the permissions for Rob Bell's sermon. Well, actually, if you have a smartphone uh, like this, it, it will already be good for what you need to do. And again, one of the first things you need to do as your advice is to test the upload speed. And once, once I've gotten that and I have good signal and I can do it, and one of the f first things I recommend people is always clean your lens. That makes a whole world of difference in the image that you get for, for recording. When you do Facebook Live, don't do it handheld. Really, what happens after a few seconds or minutes, you get tired and you start, your hand starts shaking. And it's really hard to watch that because some people will be savvy enough to watch it on their 60-inch TV at home yeah. because they have a smart TV and they'll, that slight movement you're doing right there <laughs> is really going to be amplified and that's just not really very good. One of the things you can do is really find a way to stabilize it. You can put them on a tripod or even on a stack of hymnals. And you really want to get the eye level of the phone to your lens. Because when you, when you put it high, then and it's like you're looking up. And if you're too low, you're like looking down on people. Uh, lighting is also an important factor. You want to make sure that you have adequate lighting. I would put the window in front of me so that it is going to be my main light and it will have a natural looking light on me so that it, it will hopefully balance out the way the details are going to be seen by new viewers. You can be in the middle of the, of the aisle of the church, somewhere maybe almost towards the back. That way, if you are somewhere there, you find the right lighting that's going to be good for you, you will have the backdrop with the altar. That way, there's still the, the, uh, the ambience Feels of yeah, God. Uh, it's really an opportunity to be creative. I've heard that sounds important. Oh, it's very important. Actually, if you are using it in social media, sound is very important in the sense that I would, I would suggest to people to always check your sound. And the best way to check your sound, do a recording first. Record yourself, maybe a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, you talking, and then play it back and listen to how you sound it. You will be the best judge of how that sound is. The headphone actually is a microphone. So that, that actually works well with uh, capturing the sound that you're trying to do. In social media, it's really important for you to know that most people have their headphones when they're listening to you. What's one piece of advice you'd give to pastors who are uh, struggling with how to move, move from their normal practice of preaching in a, in a service to preaching online? Sure. One of the key things I always uh, remind pastors who are starting to do this is have a good way of starting it very quickly, smart, prepare it, write it down, and then also be able to end it really well. Because some people just linger with before you know you go to your sermon. Um, how much? How many jokes do I have to say? How much illustration? And sometimes online, the first few seconds will determine whether people will listen to the rest of what you're going to say or not. That is not just an online thing. Okay. <laughs> So if this video was um, helpful in any way, that's amazing, but if it actually just created more questions for you, uh, please just reach out to us. Uh, you can reach David at dvalera at pnwumc.org. And you can reach Patrick at uh, pscriven at pnwumc.org. There you go. D Valera is D-V-L-E-R-A. <laughs>